Tomo News presents Space Tourism. Huge balloon capsule will take you to space in 2017. For a lofty $75,000, you'll be able to be part of a new tourism effort in the Voyager capsule and be carried to the edge of space by the end of 2017. Worldview Enterprises is offering to send passengers to an altitude of 100,000 feet above the ground in a capsule carried up by a giant balloon. Once fully inflated with helium, the balloon will expand to about the size of a football stadium. The capsule will be equipped with large windows and will be able to carry up to six passengers and two crew members. The ascent into the stratosphere will take roughly 90 minutes, and the vessel will cruise for about two hours before descending. The balloon will separate from the capsule at 50,000 feet above the ground, at which point the peril wing will guide the capsule to the landing site. On October 24, 2015, Worldview launched a successful test flight with a 1,000-pound replica of the capsule. The company is now ready to begin full-scale testing in mid-July 2017 and hopes to bring space tourism to the masses at the end of the same year. Virgin Galactic unveils new spaceship. Billionaire British entrepreneur Richard Branson on Friday unveiled the latest passenger spacecraft by his space tourism company Virgin Galactic. Dubbed Virgin Spaceship Unity, the spacecraft, part of the company's Spaceship 2 line, bears a striking resemblance to its predecessor. The two-pilot and six-passenger spacecraft, which spent over three years in construction, is carried by and launched from a larger plane, the White Knight 2. Once operational, the spacecraft will be able to carry passengers up to 100 kilometers above the planet providing those willing to pay $250,000 for the ride, in addition to the view, with several minutes of weightlessness. The VSS Unity replaces the Enterprise, which crashed in October 2014 in an accident that took the life of its test pilot. That incident, which happened after the ship's rotating tail section was unlocked during the spacecraft's descent, was blamed on human error. While lacking major cosmetic changes, the new spacecraft includes key security features that would prevent similar issues from occurring. 20-kilometer high space elevator gets patented in the US and the UK. A new technology with the potential to change how spacecrafts enter orbit has recently been patented in the UK and the US. To get shuttles into space, rockets currently use large amounts of fuel and usually also carry extra fuel. Canadian firm Thought Technology aims to change that by essentially allowing astronauts to travel partway into space on an electrical elevator. The inflatable structure could, in theory, stand up to 20 kilometers high over 20 times higher than the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. From the top, spacecrafts could launch into orbit in a single stage, eliminating the initial need for vertical launch rockets. Inventor Ben Quine told the CBC that the tower could resist lightning, meteors, as well as Category 5 hurricanes. The company's CEO, Carolyn Roberts, believes the invention, along with the development of self-landing rocket technologies, could herald a new era in space transport. Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 explodes using new fuel. One pilot was killed and another seriously injured when a space tourism plane exploded during a test flight. Virgin Galactic's White Knight 2 and Spaceship 2 took off from the Mojave Air and Space Port at 9.18 a.m. on Friday. The White Knight 2 carried the Spaceship 2 to a height of 50,000 feet. The spaceship 2 then detached from the mothership at 10.10 10 a.m. and continued its ascent with the plastic-based rocket fuel being used for the first time. About 60 to 90 seconds after the rocket was ignited, there was an explosion that destroyed the aircraft in mid-air. One pilot ejected from the plane and parachuted to the ground, surviving with serious injuries. The other pilot was killed. His body was found among the wreckage about 20 miles northeast of the city of Mojave. In September, Richard Branson said he expected the first commercial flight would happen in the early part of 2015, but there's no telling how long this crash will delay plans. Among the clients who have signed up for the quarter million dollar trip to space are Ashton Kutcher, Lady Gaga, and Justin Bieber. Virgin Galactic spaceship likely broke up in mid-air after feathering mechanism deployed. The Virgin Galactic spaceship that crashed on Friday killing one pilot and seriously injuring the other may have broken up in mid-air because of the premature deployment of the craft's feathering mechanism, the acting chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board, Christopher Hart, told a public briefing. Virgin Galactic's White Knight 2 aircraft took off with Spaceship 2 from the Mojave Air and Spaceport on Friday morning. At an altitude of 50,000 feet, 
Spaceship 2 detached from the mothership and 9 seconds after its rocket engine was ignited, the pilot unlocked the spacecraft's feathering mechanism while the plane was still ascending. Two seconds later, the aircraft's feathers were forced into a vertical position, causing the plane to destabilize and rip apart. The spaceship's fuel tanks and engines were found largely intact, leading investigators to rule out an explosion as the cause of the accident. As it was on a test flight, the spacecraft was filmed by several recording devices, including six onboard video cameras, a radar and a plane flying nearby. Surviving co-pilot Peter Siebold could hold the key to understanding how the accident occurred. Virgin Galactic Spaceship May Have Broken Up in Mid-Air The Virgin Galactic Spaceship that crashed on Friday in the Mojave Desert, killing one pilot and seriously injuring the other, may have broken up in mid-air. The acting chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board, Christopher Hart, told a public briefing. Virgin Galactic's White Knight 2 cargo aircraft took off with Spaceship 2 from the Mojave Air and Space Port on Friday morning. After Spaceship 2 detached from the mothership, and nine seconds after its rocket engine was ignited, the spacecraft's feathers were unlocked by the pilot. Two seconds later, the spaceship's feathers moved to a vertical position of their own accord, before reaching the deployment safe speed of Mach 1.4. Investigators think the feathers attached from the main body mid-air. The spaceship's fuel tanks and engines were found largely intact, leading investigators to exclude an explosion as the cause of the accident. Because it was on a test flight, the spacecraft was filmed by several recording devices, including six onboard video cameras, a radar, and a plane flying nearby. According to the Los Angeles Times, it could take investigators up to a year to determine the cause of the accident. Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 is rumored to be primed for launch. The air launched Space Tourism, Spaceship 2 is carried to launch altitude by a jet-powered mothership and released into the upper atmosphere. Six passengers will pay about $200,000 each to experience the suborbital flight in a period of weightlessness. The Spaceship 2's feathered tail system prevents catastrophes and allows the ship to glide back to Earth at a safe speed, landing like a normal plane. Aside from space tourism, Virgin Galactic believes the spaceship will have other commercial uses such as NASA logistical support. x Lynx Passenger Spacecraft Almost Ready for Space Trips Lynx Passenger Spacecraft built by x Aerospace is close to completion, the company said. Lynx Passenger Spacecraft is a piloted two-seat vehicle designed to fly one passenger to space and back in 30 minutes. The spacecraft takes off horizontally, like an airplane. Fifty seconds later, the engines are lighted. The aircraft goes supersonic and very close to vertical position. It travels at three times the speed of sound. And three minutes after lighting the engines, the craft is at 180,000 feet, about 50,000 kilometers. It turns off its engines and goes to peak altitude of 350,000 feet, about 107,000 kilometers. A minute and a half is needed to coast back down, enter the Earth's atmosphere, and then approximately 20 minutes are used for the aircraft to glide and land horizontally. According to x the Lynx is still undergoing tests. The first launch should take place within the next 6 to 18 months. UK to build the country's first spaceport by 2018. The UK government is planning to build a spaceport in the country by 2018. It would be the first of its kind outside the US. Eight aerodromes in the UK have been shortlisted, with Scotland home to six of the possible locations. The spaceport will be built at a remote site where regular air traffic is low. The ideal location needs a longer than usual runway length of 3,000 meters or more, as space planes travel at far greater speeds than standard planes and need more room to land. The spaceport could be used to launch satellites as well as commercial space flights. The government hopes that the port will eventually become a part of Virgin Galactic's space tourism project. Virgin Galactic plans to take passengers to a height of around 100 kilometers above the Earth, while allowing them to experience about six minutes of zero gravity. It is reported that Virgin already had talks with Scottish ministers about establishing a site at Lossimouth. 
A Spanish company plans to offer trips to near space in a high-tech balloon by 2015. The helium balloon lifts off from an aerodrome. It is attached to a cabin designed to accommodate four passengers and two pilots. The helium expands as it encounters less pressure and warmer temperatures as the balloon ascends into the stratosphere at 36 kilometers above sea level. The balloon then steadily cruises in the stratosphere where passengers can enjoy panoramic views of the Earth. Gas in the balloon will be vented for the descent. The balloon will then be detached from the cabin and a parafoil will be deployed for landing. The company revealed that two people have already booked this 110,000 euro trip. The Dream Chaser spacecraft completed a captive carry test run on August 22nd at Dryden Flight Research Center in Edwards, California. The Dream Chaser is a spacecraft that measures 9 meters long and has a wingspan of 7 meters. It is able to launch vertically on an Atlas V and land horizontally on conventional runways. It is designed to carry two to seven people from low Earth orbit and provide launch services to transport NASA astronauts to the International Space Station from US soil. The captive carry test was carried out to test several of the systems and subsystems that will help the spacecraft operate properly on its own. During the test, the spacecraft was carried under an Ericsson air crane helicopter. A Dutch company has opened an office in Hong Kong to offer commercial space travel targeting the Asian market by the end of 2014. The Lynx Mark II carries a pilot and one passenger who will act as a co-pilot. The craft takes off from a runway horizontally with a maximum speed of 3,552 kilometers per hour it will be in space within four minutes. Engines will be switched off at about 60 kilometers above sea level. It allows the craft to glide into space at an altitude of 103 kilometers above sea level. The passenger will have up to six minutes to experience weightlessness in space before descending back to Earth. A 60-minute trip on the Lynx Mark II to space is price tagged at 100,000 US dollars. For $75,000, Worldview can lift a passenger 30 kilometers into space by a hot air balloon. The balloon is propelled by 1.1 cubic meters of helium and guided by a steerable parachute. Six passengers and two pilots are transported within a pressurized capsule. After a 90-minute ascent to its peak height, the balloon will remain in the stratosphere for another two hours before the capsule drifts back down to Earth. At 30 kilometers, the balloon is over twice the altitude reached by conventional airplanes, but it is still far from the outer space where weightlessness is experienced. The initial launch is expected to take place at Spaceport America in New Mexico. Other companies such as Virgin Galactic and x have also presented similar plans for space tourism. The balloon's cabin is the length of a Lamborghini and carries four passengers and two crew. The cabin is attached to a balloon big enough to hold an entire Saturn V rocket inside. The balloon uses helium to lift passengers into the stratosphere for a three-hour cruise at an altitude where they can see auroras and the sun rising over the Earth. The balloon reaches an altitude of 22 miles. Suborbital and orbital space travel reach altitudes 3 and 10 times higher, respectively. Zero G take a ride on the Vomit Comet. Why in the hell would anyone want to pay thousands of dollars to get puked on in an airplane? If this sounds like your idea of fun, then catch a ride with Zero Gravity Corporation. Zero G's planes follow a parabolic flight path to produce weightlessness. As the plane climbs towards the top of the parabola, passengers feel a force of nearly 1.8 Gs. Once the plane reaches the top of the arc, flyers experience 25 seconds of zero gravity. Then it's back down to start all over. Each plane will perform the maneuver 15 times during a 90 minute flight. The planes will be divided into three sections, with prices ranging from the $2,700 cheapskate experience in the party room to the most expensive $68,000 
tailor-made experience in the VIP room. The service will start in Japan next January. From Asia, it'll move to the Middle East in April, and then to Russia and Europe in May. Service in North and South America will begin in the fall. Tomo News Happy Holiday List of 2014's Top Legal Threats Dear viewer, today, something a little different. Because the bleatings of pathetic crybabies will never deter us from animating the truth, we present to you the top three legal threats we received in 2014. First, back in June we made a polite animation about the Zero-G Corporation, a company which offers passengers a simulated zero-gravity experience on its modified jets. It was a cool animation and free press for them. But their belligerent PR lady didn't like our use of their logo and threatened us with this cease and desist letter. We at Tomo News don't like bullies, so calmly replied that we'd modify the piece and then made this animation. Then came Cameltoe Molarkin, the hag mayor of an English town who we criticised in this animation after she tried to use the police to punish the maker of a different animation which made fun of her... Cameltoe. Soon after, we got this email and a boring legal threat from her fancy lawyer demanding we pull the animation or else. We reminded her that being a small-time politician doesn't give her the right to bully her critics and that we'd include her threat in a future story. Finally, we reported on the University of Wisconsin Tau Kappa Epsilon fraternity, which made national headlines after it was investigated for methodically spiking girls' drinks with date rape drugs at their parties. TKE threatened to sue us for trademark infringement as we used their logo in the piece. They should have hired a real lawyer. This was our response. A person viewing Tomo News would not reasonably confuse our news with a fraternity that systematically roofies female visitors to its houses. Therefore, there is no trademark infringement. So dear viewer, over to you. Vote for your favourite legal thread in the comments. Kate Upton recently did a zero-g photo shoot in a plane. The plane flew to an altitude of 24,000 feet and slowly pulled up at a 45-degree angle as the plane was getting up and over the hump. Passengers experienced zero gravity for about 20 to 30 seconds. 